What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part lucky number 13 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Blood Dragons Immortal Empires campaign. So as we saw last time, the difficulty has spiked at least where the quest battles slash worthy foe battles are concerned and Aberash's army did struggle, though perhaps not Aberash himself, but the rest of his army and did struggle to survive against both the Doom Wolf Knights and something mongrels and the uh, mm, cafe and dragon blooded monks or whatever it was that we faced off against quite neat that the mod has added those super difficult units that essentially match our own units in strength within the quest battles uh, which keeps it nice and interesting and difficult and allows for Aberash to face off against the most difficult foes which is what he'd be doing anyway uh, speaking of sort of uh, loosely related I did destroy Uskalag between the episodes and did a few of those minor battles that you know couldn't be auto resolved but had to be done anyway I did think about occupying auto or Uskalag rather as some of you have suggested that we take a few more key at this point to uh, get a little bit more in the way of army capacity. I probably will do this. I think we will take Jarna Grund and establish a blood keep right here, but I also don't want to go overboard on it simply because Aberash is not an empire builder. He would not really care about the affairs of the mortals and stuff and just walks around being a hermit and seeking out uh, the greatest fights and teaching his wayward children uh, to do the same and better themselves. They have a tendency to sort of ignore the don't feed on the weak thing but <laughs> anyway actually speaking of his uh, uh speaking of his wayward children they might be empire builders so i think if we if uh Walla Karkin was to the uh, uh to be the faction leader and we had Aberash as a hero instead then perhaps we would have done it a little bit differently but uh, and gotta go with what Aberash would do <laughs> that's my motto anyway anyway what we gotta do this time as well start marching on down to Jarna Grund. We do want a couple more of these uh, disciples of, of the path in this army as it will need them to go for the harder quest battles, especially assuming that other quest battles or other worthy foes will get harder from here on out. Even harder I should say. Which I'm very, very excited about. Uh, before we get started on whatever it is that we have to do though, and I think we're done with this turn, so I'm just gonna skip, skip, skip and end the turn. Uh, yes, we reached the engagement threshold and so we'll be doing an hour long episode this time as well and more importantly than that this is the 13th episode which is where I usually like to uh, lower the uh, threshold a little bit or at the very least one last time so from now on 300 likes and 40 comments and the next episode will be an hour long as well but that will be the last time that we lower the threshold so once it drops below that uh, we will be returning to standard episode lengths though <laughs> <laughs> if Archaeon and Luin are any uh, are any indicator, ooh, which hunter attack is imminent? Uh, are any indicator? It's likely that we could go full series, or at least close to it, uh, with full hour episodes, at least as long as the interest remains. Anyway, Wallach, I would like you to head out to sea. You're ready to go to Nongchang to Katha. Mm, we could transfer the Bloodkin Thrall to you, but I was thinking of actually giving the Abyssal Revenant these guys. Wait, the Empty Dead. So as long as we do the quest, we can give him some of these. This will allow his army to become more viable earlier, because it's going to be a little bit of a while before uh, he has any of his elites, just because we are using Martial Valor in a lot of other places. So it's really something to consider. But for now, Wallach... You're going to have to go out to see an... Oh, are you going to suffer attrition here? Well, that's unfortunate, but what can you do? Go for it. Battle calls me hence. Okay, and just out of curiosity, are you able to recruit from his army while... No, it says cannot recruit unit. That's a bit of a shame. I thought you might be able to do it while he was at sea and still providing this like a black arc would, but alas, it looks like he cannot. But he can't continue laughing about it. He's laughing at us, isn't he? All righty. <laughs> All righty. Let's see. Zacharias, where are we going to send you, sir? Uh, ooh. We got a little tiny Carl Franz stack here that unfortunately we cannot reach with either army by the looks of it. Hmm. 
<laughs> that said, we do have to still be somewhat concerned about it. Let's pop you, Edmund von Sinclair, right here. And I'm still going to keep following you with Tiberius Kale, though now that the Witch Hunter threat is arising, we have to be a little bit more concerned about it than perhaps we were before. As in, might have to actually send Edmund back around to Middenheim. I didn't really want to do that earlier, but uh, now it's certainly a uh, important consideration. Also, before I forget that, wait, are we able to build the Champions of Ordo Profundum here? No. We still need to get the precious metals for it, but we're saving it for something else. One of the uh, one of the big buildings, aren't we? Hmm. We have this one here. Anarch, do you get you? Oh, yeah, that's what we're saving you for. We need the Reliquary of the Seal and the Empowered Reliquary of the Seal to get those additional blood kisses per turn, which I guess we can get right now. Hmm. I mean, we can start walking towards World's Edge Archway. I'm just thinking that we can't get too far away from Mount Gunbad because it can't defend itself yet, which is a bit of an issue. Anyway, Griswold Zubisendorf, you're going to move southward. And okay, I guess we can summon another Ordo Profundum champion here. Oh, actually, no, we can't. We're at a Bloodline champion capacity. All right, we're gonna need to. Oh, and we have a Dark Virtue of Immortal Disdain here as well. Uh, we're gonna need an Aberash to build some capacity, which means we're gonna need more metal. Ever more metal. Go figure. Metal to test your metal. And blood. Oh, damn it! You were supposed to join Wallach's army. <laughs> My bad. Actually, funnily enough. Oh. Uh, some of you have told me it should be Blut... Blutson. Not Sun. There should be an H in there. Alrighty. Gotta German it up properly. Now. You. I mean, you can certainly take Schlanhopek and probably fight any basic armies that uh, enemies send against you. We also have another capacity which we should probably be using for raiding purposes for metal. Uh, in fact... What do we have in terms of defenders here? That's fine. You know what? Uh, let's briefly summon Zacharias Rotep just out here, and we're going to pop him into raiding until we actually need the army capacity. For now, we don't have the valor to really build an army anyway. So, yeah. And Abyssal Revenant, I guess you're marching to Lanwapek, and you can do so while raiding, while you, I guess, will still follow Wallach Harkin. And the reason I was thinking maybe we put Blut into a different army is his... Uh, his stats here, he has Vanguard Leader and Blood Knight Leader, which means he gets Vanguard Deployment for Thrall Knights and Blood Knights. Which means we could build an army that's half Thralls and half Blood Knights and have the entire thing and just be... Uh, or Blood Dragon Knights, I presume. Uh, the entire thing be Vanguard deployed, which sounds pretty darn strong just based off a single hero. And relatively thematic for an army as well. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, you're going to Wissenberg. We're going to raise it since we're raising everything around Nuln now. Don't want jerks randomly attack and blood keep again. And okay, that basically did no damage there. We will raise it this time and allow you to move closer to Carl. Alright, sort of worked. And ah, damn, I was hoping that you could go into raiding, but alas, you cannot. Alright. Went to channeling, I guess it'll at least allow you to heal. I'm gonna say move you down here. Though I imagine Carl will return to Aelhart or Helmgard, but either way, I think Zacharias, it's time to travel through Fort Saul and towards Castle Carcass Sun. It's been just sitting there staring at us. And now that you have two of these uh, phantoms, you should be good. Though, if more of these guys appear at Nuln, it would be a decent time to have you hunt them down and get another phantom before we do, since it's so soon. Hmm, I'll give it some thought. Uh, it's not the biggest priority. Now, I did summon two Bloodkin Aspirants here, and the reason for that is we need them to find Mr. Astrogoth Ironhand. His plus 15% missile resistance army-wide is just too good to pass up. Go here. Arashi Cragbrows. <laughs> Cragbrows, alright, not bad. Uh, you are not Astrogoth, and I don't see Astrogoth. Hopefully he's not dead. Yeah. All right, well, we'll hopefully find him. Oh, speaking of Astrogoth, the uh, uh, the previous patch added the ability to search duels or the previous patch for the mod, which is just fantastic idea from the modder, so we can type, like, Astro Astrogoth in here. I don't actually know how to use it, though. Or is it... Oh, and it's also alphabetical now. Oh, that's fantastic. Or do we have to go... Hmm... I don't know how to use it, damn it. <laughs> oh, and show only completed duels. Wait, wait, wait. 
Oh, it allows us to search the completed deals. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Yeah, this is fantastic. We can search what we have right now. Regeneration, death blow, barrier, garbage, or ogre fighting ability. Uh, Charles, okay. When fighting empires, okay, and can replenish a neutral territory is decent. Azag's met the research rate. Man, there's some huge differences, like regeneration and barrier. Amazing, and then relatively uh, mad. But you know what? That's pretty normal, considering that uh, basic regular defeat traits from vanilla are also... Some of them are ridiculously strong, and some are uh, relatively not so strong at all. But anyway, Astrogoth, yeah. Yeah, much, much great... Much, much great? Great improvement to this whole uh, screen, I gotta say. Very good work from the modder, as uh, missile resistance 15%, that's what we want. Don't even care about the uh, bonus leadership when fighting Chaos Dwarfs, though it might be helpful in, uh, whatchamacallit. Uh, with the Conclave, it might be in Jarna Grund. Uh, let's see, so we need you to sort of... Move around and hit Fort Dorjny Vord at the same time, don't we? If we raid here, I wonder if we'd be able to go around and uh, help Aberash. Oh, no, wait, you're going to raise this, aren't you? I guess if you're going to raise, raise this way. Although I guess we have to find out whether we... Okay, now, there's basically nothing spawning there. Okay, it's fine. I'll resolve that and raise it. Four more metal and see how far you go. Actually, not bad. Uh, you can still leech XP. Hmm. You know what? We can have you sack this and then move past it to Saber Mountain. How many territories does this guy have? He's got nine. Damn, he's got a lot. I really don't want to spend too long trying to hunt down Astrogoth himself. I'm just hoping he tries to react to us in some way. And also, where are his other territories? Mm. So, oh my lord, he's, by the looks of it, moved all the way through to Krakadrak, so he might be here. Huh. If that's the case, if he's super far, we're not gonna go up here yet. I mean, yes, we still have to defeat Throt and uh, all the Kislev Lords, including Boris up there, and... Throg and all that stuff, but we can do that later. I think we want to move southward first. We still have to get to Lamia, and there's a bunch of Darkland stuff I want to do, and then go through this area. Man. Uh, Abra just kind of wants to be everywhere at once. There's so many worthy foes to fight. Uh, both quest battle and the regular variety. But anyway, uh, you're going to head on into Fort Dorjny, I guess. And I guess if you're going to sack it, you'll want to sack this way towards Saber Mountain. So go something like this, and I will leech the XP with Rudiger, and move. Perfect, and Pyrrhic victory against this. All right, we might have to might have to speed through it. I have to wonder how much damage we'll take doing this. Should we march stance you just so you're a little bit further? Hmm, maybe. I mean, you are supposed to follow and raise stuff as well. Ooh, I don't like the fact that you're going to suffer attrition though. Hmm. Maybe not. Oh, you'll suffer attrition this way anyway, so we have no choice either way. Alright, fine, go here. Go here, and we will continue on. Now it's a close victory, but one of our Plutkin thralls would die. Alright, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna speed through this one. No choice. Ooh, everything looks pretty great with this lighting. So obviously, as you guys can see, while I was originally going to make this into a uh, uh, into a regular manual battle and play it at max speed for like, I don't know, uh, 30 seconds or so, uh, it, uh, well, the Chaos Dwarves didn't rout within the first 15 seconds, as I had originally expected, so we're going to watch our units whack away at them just a little bit, because, well, you know what, why not? Anyway, we continue up the ramp with our two units of uh, Disciples of the Path Knights who are going to smash in to those uh, Chaos Dwarfs and Hobgobs while we await the enemy reinforcements. Uh, there we go. Just 
30 seconds and that's where the real fight is gonna be which is why we only sent so few units here though Aberash does lead them and he could frankly take care of everything here himself if it wasn't for the fact that uh, it would just take a, a reasonably decent while Anyway, I'm sure the Hobgobs will fall easily to the uh, Might of the Disciples of the Path, but we've got reinforcements uh, coming onto the field in three seconds. Now, I did deploy the rest of our army really close to the edge like this. I would never normally do this. Uh, just did this because I figured this will make the battle go by faster, as I was originally planning to play it manually. So, hence, uh, hence the deployment like that. But anyway, uh, we have uh, Camille von Waldenhoff out front, who is going to be facing off against a centaur, or bull render rather, Tarek. And the rest of the units move in. It looks like the enemy has two of those skullcrackers on the field, which should be fairly threatening in melee, even against our knights. So, hopefully, we can uh, uh, focus them down before they do too much damage. Disciples of the Path taking about 10 to 15 percent of their HP as that big goal and the skullcracker grinds through their lines and into the bloodkin thralls behind them the bloodkin thralls clearly under much more threat as well and by the looks of it a couple get knocked out already look at the damage there we go we gotta love the skullcrackers very nice job look at the, the hp on those bloodkin thralls drop do not underestimate these things or at the very least, do not underestimate them against the uh, uh, basic slash weaker troops, like the Bloodkin. How are we doing otherwise? It looks like the Bloodkin Aspirin did not have a good time against that Centaur Toruk, and is going to get him out. Granted, he's still built up as a support unit, which explains why he's not going to be super capable in a fight. But it's not like his stats are bad, 80-74, and just that his items are of the support variety. The enemy infantry is not having nearly as great a time, but it's... Uh, its engines of war certainly are. The Skullcrackers continuing gr to grind through those poor Bloodkin thralls. And it's not like the zombies are of any threat to them either, and the Centaur Torok sort of running around, not going to be quite as useful to the enemies as a, a pile of uh, bull renders generally would be, but in combination with these hard-to-bring-down and pin-down Skullcrackers, they're certainly doing well. We're actually taking damage here. Uh, fortunately for us, it looks like the Disciples of the Path finally bring down the old Skullcracker. I'm sure Aberash has pretty much cleared the, uh, the interior of the enemy settlement as well, or at least is growing close to it. His disciples certainly are ripping the enemy apart, whether it be hobgobs or those uh, units of... I keep wanting to say thunderers. Uh, blunderbosses, there we go. Let's see, Aberash swing away with that great sword of his just a couple of times before the battle ends. Oh, and it looks like the Chaos Dwarf Warriors will shatter, and finally so will the rest almost all the rest of the enemy army. Camille has made it back into the fray. The enemy did bring an iron demon here, but it will get brought down by the damaged units of Bloodkin Thralls as well as our Death Guard deck watchers. Yeah, very nice, very nice. Good job, I gotta give it up to those two Skullcrackers and that iron demon for dishing out the damage. Love to see him on the field. All right, actually it turned out to be a uh, slightly nicer, a little flight than I was expecting. Pleasantly surprised, though granted at least a part of it, let's say, it was due to me not paying attention and just speeding through the whole thing, but hey. I'm guessing I doubt, uh, or I'm guessing uh, nobody's going to complain about the little tiny extra mini cinematic. Anyway, we can... I mean, we could sack it and raise it for slightly less metal. It's still probably worth it to us, I would say. I mean, our money is good, so we just straight up raise it, but, uh, well, Aberash is actually pretty much out of movement anyway. You know what? The, I, don't, I don't think we're going to miss the extra 4,000 gold. Just raise it. This just raise it, and then we'll allow the uh, these guys, or this guy, to... Ooh! Perfect vigor in campaign the... movement range. Nice. Uh, we'll allow this guy, Rediger, to follow. You can't raid, unfortunately, but you can go into oh, Hidden Encampment and, and start moving towards Saber Mountain. Dragon and you can follow Master along the, despite the slight damage to uh, your stuff. Damn that chaos corruption. Anyway, uh, Anarch. Now, you do have to build stuff, which is why we're saving our metal. I see Kruglug 
but I don't see Skarsnik. We also do want to save Skarsnik for Aberash, because he, yeah, he's got a good defeat trade, as I rec or does he? No, wait, Tretch has a good defeat trade, I don't remember about Skarsnik. We'll have to double check. Uh, you can't reach anything anyway, so it doesn't really matter. What you can do is go right here, go into Raiding Stance, Raid our own territory for a little bit, keep on marching forward. And we actually could have allowed uh, Griswold to join this. Eh, oh well, not a big deal. Watch them attack Anarch. Watch uh, Skarsnik have another full stack nearby and then just hit us with four stacks while Anarch uh, is relatively weak. Well, if it happens, it happens, and it'll be do or die for him. Anyway, Reinhardt, you're gonna keep recruiting the... Man, Vlad. Uh, you're gonna keep recruiting all those guys. Rabe Gearhoff, you are going to join this army as an aspirant to uh, buff up all those bloodkin. Good, good, good. And we already have that Forsaken Circle, and the rest of this looks fine and dandy to me. Alright, well, looks like we're good to go. Minus the text that we're going to pick. I guess we have no choice but to spend the 500 Martial Valor on order of the Depth Guards. We really need unfathomable growth. It's just... it's just necessary. Our growth is very slow on the castles. Most of them have been taking ages to reach Tier 4 and still haven't reached them. And on top of that, uh, we have no buildings that we can build that can increase growth. So the best way to do it, or the only way to do it, is via the uh, tech tree. Uh, Itza wants to peace out. I don't know, I was thinking we'd probably want to level up the Abyssal Revenant a little bit via attacking them. So I don't really see any need to do that at the current time. So I think we're okay. I don't think we have any other buildings other than Anarchs. And he can wait until he conquers another territory. Yeah, I think you can wait. I mean, it's not like we'd be getting the Blood Kisses thing immediately anyway, because it would cost... Let me just double check, though. 9 plus 15, so 24. Oh, we actually would have it by next turn. Alright, fine. Go into encamp and then build it right now, then. Funnily enough, we probably won't need that many more Blood Kisses soon, but we do still have a bunch of Blood Kiss-related techs all here. So we need 12 Blood Kisses just to get these up and running. And damn, these cost a lot of valor as well, but they're really strong upgrades. Devastating Flanker from all Black Knights will certainly make them a lot more valuable and a lot more viable. Uh, character initiatives and assigned skill points in the turn. Go. And ooh, I didn't check whether the uh, whether the guys are spawning this turn or next turn. Guess we're about to find out. Treachy, we were going to attack you. Non-aggression pack, no. I mean, I guess in some ways we were going to attack almost everybody and... He is going to attack Anarch, but he didn't bring a second and third army, just going to attack by himself. All right. You, uh, it's all you, good. It's all you. Uh, let's get the Scarecrow banner on. I don't know, it doesn't really matter. Uh, for now, and Razor Standard. I'm going to say on the Knights. Why the Knights? They're the most numerous units with uh, 40. Technically, it's even with the Bloodkin Thralls, but the uh, Bloodkin Thralls are uh, currently damaged. Anyway, let's have the Templehof, uh, or Drakenhof Templars. Ugh, the, the damn Temple after Drakenhof makes me always want to say Templehof. Uh, Drakenhof Templars try their luck against the Greenskins. Yeah. Alrighty, here we go. First of all, we have our Ordo Templarum Champion, and looking absolutely incredible. Now, the uh, Skeletal Manticore is just incredible looking. Absolutely love it. The Skeletal Manticore looks so much better than the regular Manticore. Maybe I'm a little bit biased because I love the vampires, but nonetheless. And we have our uh, very masked and armored up Ordo, Templara, Ordo Templarum Champion looking very good on that Manticore in general. What a great model. Yeah. Absolutely in love with this thing. Uh, and otherwise, we've also increased the numbers of our regular Ordo troops. We've got a fair amount of them now. We've got our shielded ones leading the way. And then we've got the uh, veterans with their great swords following along here. The uh, fangs of Vashinesho here. Hmm. 
they're probably not going to get too threatened by the night goblin archers or at the very least the veterans are not i don't know about the regular troops but we'll find out anyway anarch's gonna chase around the enemy a little bit but let's get the line the main line into the fray some squig hoppers try to hop on in or herders try to hop on in nope hoppers damn it every time <laughs> Oh, every damn time. Herders, hoppers, hoppers, herders. Potato, tomato, potato, tomato. Anyway, uh, they didn't have enough mass to get through those Ordo Templarum uh, units, or those uh, warriors, and thus we'll be able to hold the line. Some trolls joined the fray as well. But despite their size, they're not going to have an easy time against the uh, vamps, though they will have the mass to knock them around a little bit. And there in the background, the uh, units of various Thrall Knights have closed, and the enemy range units are going to provide no support to the enemy, and by the looks of it, neither are the Wolf Chariots and whatnot. We're going to send the Drakenhof Templar Champion to hunt down that Death Hag, really, or not Death Hag, yeah, River Troll Hag, because we really don't want any more of that uh, spirit leech coming down upon us and though it looks like we're gonna get distracted by some gobos i'm sure we'll head back into the fray and start attacking the river troll hag who is starting to take damage enemy reinforcements are arriving onto the field and we have waited with at least a few of our uh, bloodkin thrall knights for the purpose of hitting them immediately and specifically knocking out of that uh, doom diver really don't want the doom divers ripping our poor thralls apart as they are certainly weak enough to get really, really badly hurt or uh, lose plenty of models to the Doom Divers. And frankly, I'm reasonably sure the Doom Divers could probably kill off models from the Drape Drakenhof uh, Templar Warriors as well. So, it's not Drapenhof. Or maybe it is, I don't know. There's lots of drapes. Actually, would there be dra nah, there probably would be a lot of drapes in Drakenhof, right? You gotta cover the whole the windows or else the sun gets in. Ah, makes sense. And damn, that was a nice charge from the uh, uh, from the champion. There's such a bloody charge, I should say. And he's gonna go after that Night Goblin Shaman by the looks of it now as the uh, River Troll Hag is done for and all the units around her as well. And oh, does he have soul siphoning? Uh, what is his effect on them? Psychic siphoning, who's that coming from? You don't have the contact? Oh yes, you do have the contact effect. Okay, okay. I just had to make sure, which actually doesn't make sense considering our uh, lords like Edmund had it as well. Anyway, Anarch had a quick little duel with the enemy lord, but the enemy lord's only level 2 and thus would have no chance against Anarch or his uh, great sword there. And by the looks of it, down he goes. The enemy trolls will rout in, by the looks of it, the enemy mainline, which is primarily made up of basic orcs and gobos, will rout as well. Surprised to see how many of them here will break, in, but seeing their lord fall and all their heroes fall and all their back line and destroyed, it's hardly surprising. Quick little battle for Anarch, and uh, well, his army will get better and more powerful as long as we keep getting those uh, units in there. All right, there we go. Nice that they gave Anarch a fight, though it won't be so nice if he didn't build his building by virtue of it, because we would have also lost out on the metal and probably on the healing, so just in case we're going to enthrall those captives and heal up a teensy bit. Uh, we certainly didn't come away unscathed during the fight, only lost five losses after the uh, post-battle uh, recovery due to invocation of Nehek, uh, but it does feel like the Dragonhof Templars for now are a little bit more fragile than the uh, Blood Dragon or the Ordo Draconis uh, units, but obviously with veterancy, with upgrades, uh, this is all going to uh, look a little bit different, especially as I believe the Drakenhof uh, units are supposed to be the tankier of the bunch. Anyway... Uh, let's see if anybody else is going to deign to attack us this time around, but it does not look like it. You were unable to finish your thing. Well, <laughs> a shame, but can't do much about it. Enemy killed in battle, enemy killed in battle, another channeling staff, and there's that uh, passive order profundum ability for depth guard units. And it's physical resistance and vigor per second reduction, which ain't that bad. Which hunter's attack remains imminent, though it looks like two turns. 
I just just say that constantly. Ooh, immune to high seas, reef, and storm attrition. I wish we could have that when we started moving out to sea. Uh, let's have you join this army. Like so. And are you both not leveled? Okay, well, we can get you another point in training, sir. Good. Uh, hit Mr. Grizzgut's bootlicker, please. And destroy him. Hopefully that didn't kill off any of our units. No, good. And, I don't know, heal up the slightly hurt unit. I assume we can raise at least something here. Uh, either one. We could sack one and raise the other. I would imagine that World's Edge... Okay, which one is... Yeah, World's Edge Archery should be fought first, because it'll probably damage us more. So we'll sack this and... Ooh, I didn't realize that there was another stack nearby, but nonetheless. I'll resolve this. And then yeah, we get four. We do have our money. And yes, we're about to spend... Ah, you know what? Fine, just raise it. Just raise it. And go to our own territory. Perfect. And we actually are in range of this one. Though since the last time these guys attacked, there's a decent chance that they do so again. Though I also have a feeling that they did attack only because they were... Uh, they weren't able to see us. We do have to keep an eye on Mount Gunbad, though. Oh. And yeah, it's 95% plus 5%. You know what? I think we can't risk getting hurt now. So we're going to go into encamp. We're going to go here, although... Watch this guy get uh, get hit by this again. I'll just hope that the reliquary comes up, but I don't want Mount Gunbed to fall, so we're heading back into it for the uh, for the witch hunter threat. Wallach, you sir, are headed out to sea. Let's have you join his army. And oh, can the awakening defend itself? You know what? I think rather than going to Schlanwapek, we have to return to the awakening just in case the abyssal revenant gets uh, hit by. Uh, by a pile of enemy witch hunters. Maybe I should have kept Wallach here after all, but too late. Go to the Abyssal Riptide, sir. And the Riptide that we will choose will be the Nanchang one. Not the Lamia one, because I think Aberash can reach it, though I suppose if we set up here, we might be able to just send Wallach there instead. Maybe. Traverse. Alright, good to go, good to go. Zacharias, you, I guess you're sticking around in Nuln for one last one of these. Edmund, I take it you won't be able to reach Mr. Carl by the looks of it now. So, you stay here. Edmund, you will summon your first Fleshwalker Mongrel. And then I guess we're going to march to answer you this way. To return to Middenheim. It looks like we won't be able to reach it, though. Hmm. Well, let's hope the two armies don't spawn there. We're probably going to keep Edmund around here for at least a decent while. There's a lot of stuff to destroy in the vicinity anyway. And then you can join the army as well, Tiberius. Good. I'm reasonably likely to try to trade the Drakenhof Sky Reavers to a Reinhardt here, but, uh, well, we need to actually join those armies together, and the problem is we can't really leave Castle Drakenhof because of this. I take it... Yeah, so this guy, it's not that his AI is broken so much as the fact that he's not at war with anybody, and thus he's not taking territory. If only we could get him to join war against somebody, like the Golden Order, then he'd be able to take their stuff. But we'd have to give him 58k. I guess there is another reason to get money. Mm. But anyway, for now, let's keep on looking for Astrogoth, though, by the looks of it, he's not here since the Dolgenar. I wonder if Kolek is there, though. Hmm. Alright, and this is a ruin. Tribe Slaughter belongs to the Skaven. Man, Astrogoth, he's just not here. <laughs> the in his interior provinces are getting obliterated and he's just not here. Uh, can you reach Saber Mountain? No. You cannot. At least you cannot this turn. I guess what we'll do is we'll raid Stance right here relatively close to it, then we'll send Rudiger to uh, raise it, presumably. I guess you can raid for now as well. I believe you'll be able to reach it next turn. Well, even if you can't, Aberash can. And then we'll move down to Jarna Grunt. Uh, even without extra units, I think we'll probably fight a... Uh, quest battle? I'm wondering whether it should be a worthy foe or quest battle. We have several other quest battles that we can fight right now, so... And those options still exist. Anyway. Oh. Hmm. I actually had a thought. Maybe now's a good time to do it. 
Huh. Yeah, wait. Let me just let me just see here. Uh, so the Empty Dead became available after winning the quest battle of the Lost Library of Huatl, meaning that if we fight that battle now, we'd be able to get one for the Abyssal Revenant. And he may well need him for the uh, fight ahead if it's multiple fights. Yeah, fine, we'll probably do that. Alright, let's let's move everybody else around. Not you, obviously. And then we'll get to it. Fremont, Fremont Bachman, you're going out here. And frankly, by the looks of it, there isn't much to move. Alright. I see Kemmler is walking around. He's probably going to redeclare war on us sooner rather than later. I mean, if he does it again, we'll probably just destroy him. Otherwise, he'll keep annoying us, and yeah. <laughs> All right, so I think this is what we'll do. The Calling Void, I believe, is the quest from the Library of Huatl. I see it offers no item for, Ab for Aberash, so that means it should be a quest battle. Uh, let's level up Camille, and oh, right. I was thinking about where to apply those last three points. One point in Mentor, potentially, and then several points in Devastating Charge. He does have low charge. Huh. Although he also did almost melt away a couple of times, so the 12 leadership could be helpful as well. You know what, I'll think about it. I'm just not going to do it right now. Let's do the Calling Void battle. Uh, the Dusk Reavers. Ooh, the Dusk Reavers again. Oh, they looked pretty darn good that last time we fought them. Oh, right again. We're going to have to send you here as well. Uh, Dusk Reavers show themselves once again, sire. This time they attack a group of blood knights of the Ordo Profundum. We should set out at once to provide aid. And it doesn't show us what we've got to face off against, but it does show us that the balance of power is skewed in the enemy's favor, but it does have a tendency to do that. Aberash, time to go again, sir. What do we have here? More of those various Dusk Reaver units. And we do want to see them in action, but it doesn't look like that crazy amount, at least not here. And though several times we've experienced battles where the game sort of uh, said there isn't that many reinforcements, and then there turned out to be tons of reinforcements. Though, considering that we're getting tons of reinforcements... What is this? The fourth... Is that an artillery piece? Siege artillery. Hello. Oh my. We get artillery. I was not expecting that. 5167 attack, huh? Is this a... No, this is an artillery monster. I was wondering if it was a necrofex of some kind. You know, I'm excited to see what the heck this thing is. Go, 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 go. At worst, I shall have new riders to join my revenants. What a glorious day! Our fellow brothers of the Wandering Path arrive to aid our beleaguered forces. Stand fast, Ordo Profundum. Resist the lure of oblivion. Do not let the void take you this day. Alrighty, here we go. That uh, that was an interesting speech. I really liked the vo I don't know what happened with the speech in the sense that uh, I don't know what happened with the uh, uh, what seemed to be 
voice over or one voice over another voice or perhaps there were two speeches talking over each other whatever happened there uh, but the uh, first one the Ordo Profundum sounding one sounded really really cool I enjoyed it uh, more importantly than that very very much more importantly we have a freaking ship on the field what is this it's magnificent and I love everything about it uh, yeah all right, we got little oh, we got little mini uh, Queen Bess models on it, They're looking absolutely great. Very, very nice. I don't know how much. Uh, let's see. Wait, what do you have? Always flying. Well, yes, it's a big old flying ship. Ah, huh. oh, so it can't. It it can never land. So it's like a. Uh, uh, it's like a sky lantern in that regard. Quite interesting. Quite interesting. This unit has a 150% multiplier against buildings, I guess makes sense as well. Anyway, it seems to have various types of attack. It's got uh, ranged crew sniping jerks upon it, and some uh, depth guard elder reavers or whatever those are uh, standing there, plus all the additional range damage. Anyway, I'm just very excited uh, by the very concept of the ship. Uh, there's a dusk reaver captain here who appears to be on some kind of bull mount. Man, every time, every time we get one of these quests, there's just so many freaking things to look, to look, uh, to look at. It's fantastic, and he has a big old banner on him as well, which I absolutely love. Once again, more support for every, uh, uh, well, not every unit, but more units having banners on the field. Anyway, those were the main things that we got had to uh, look at here. There's also these uh, Dusk Reaver Marines, which seem to be doing massive amounts of damage. I guess they're like blunderbusses, sort of, or maybe more like super-powered handguns. Anyway, they're dangerous is what I'm getting at. We'll have to be careful about them. And we have to be careful about our allies. Now, we started all the way back here, but it's not reinforcements that we get in the form of the Ordo Profundum guys, but rather uh, the three armies are engaged, and we have a quest mi or the mission of the quest is to actually make sure all three survive. So we have to get to them really really quick before they get destroyed and there's this guy who is uh, Dagon Dagon Ithaca who is apparently going to join us after we win this fight quite excited to see what he can do especially when he's on our team there we go using those uh, village animations all right, well, you can keep that up, good sir. We gotta get to our allies, because we've got more enemies moving on to the field. What appears to be a, a skeletal a skeletal dread saurian with a massive howdah upon it, and the Dusk Reavers upon it as well. A little bit of snipe action out of these guys up here. Then we've got some kind of crazy... Uh, uh, some kind of crazy war wagons with a little crow's nest upon them. This is is a great looking pirate unit and we've got another ship a different ship at that interceptor class cruiser as well man there is so much stuff I don't even know I don't even know what we do need to be very wary of oh and also this thing has a bloody uh, has a bloody solar engine or possibly a luminarch upon it probably solar engine considering it's a, a lizardman thing uh what we have to watch out for is if i can find them here these freaking guys dusk reaver rocket battery they appear to have just a big old rocket or possibly a mortar i don't know how these guys fire yet uh but <laughs> that's a very scary item a very scary item and yeah they have little shields with them as well just gotta watch out for them Anyway, we have begun the fight. Abarash is heading towards his allies, and we have moved a few of our units of Knights of the Path in. All the while getting support from our allied ships and starting to attack these Dusk Rivers. There seems to be a broken texture on the map somewhere. Sometimes when I turn around the camera, there's like a, I don't know, sort of like a shimmery texture somewhere. Ah, there it is. There it was. I don't know what it's from, though, so... 
And it seems to be happening in certain angles, probably a specific unit. Anyway, there is a Necrofex Colossus in the middle of all this, but it's losing massive amount of HP as our units move in and will get brought down fairly quick. And the first of the enemy armies is destroyed. This is a reinforcing army, however, and we do send Aberration to block it while uh, directly facing off against the big old skeletal Dread Saurians. Once again, gotta love those pikes as well. Man, all the units on these Dusk Reavers are just great. And frankly, pretty much every single uh, every single battle, every single quest battle and worthy foe battle we've gone into, there have been a lot of great units. Love to see these flying ships fired down upon the enemy. I'd love to see a contest between these things and the thunder barges and maybe some Cathay and flying junks and uh, lanterns and whatnot. And ooh, that looked like a big blast, and by the looks of it, actually did quite a bit of damage, taking about 25% of the HP off of uh, Camille here. Gonna have to essentially send him around, and oh no, he is getting focused down by a lot of stuff. Uh, Aberash, you need to actually keep that solar engine from not from firing, generally speaking, and it looks like the Dusk Reaver Marines are gonna fire as well. We got those rocket barrages flying, and it looks like they're the Death Shrieker type, and they're going to smash right into our units of uh, Disciples of the Path Knights. And as we saw, a Disciples of the Path unit lost about a quarter of their HP to one volley. A unit of our regular units, like regular, you know, infantry units, will lose half of their HP to a single volley. We can't let these things kill everything, so we're gonna run these guys into the trees before they get obliterated and they're not having a great day. Some definitely strong range attacks coming in from the enemy. Abarash continues distracting the enemy lord, though. And we got more rocket fire coming down into more of our units. The Knight Riders taking a little bit of a hit there, but it looks like some of the enemies at least uh, absorbed some of those hits. And there we go. Half HP from the Bloodkin Thrall Warriors gone. From a single volley, we need to stop those damn rockets from firing. Very effective unit. I just wanna I just wanna see them fire into the air. I wanna see what it looks like when they fire. All right, there they go. There they go, and hopefully that's not going for us, but it does appear to be. It does look like it's going to hit some of our allies, Death Guard Reavers, though. All right. On the bright side, though, the enemy lord is a nearly done for that skeletal dread Saurian. Uh, probably died being pincushioned uh, by some army. As these things just tend to be a huge walking target. Oh, wow, it looks really cool to fight under the ship. I didn't even think of that. Damn. And these ships had a lot of atmosphere. But anyway, the Dread Saurian will drop and so will the enemy lord. We are also going to send Aberash to start uh, whacking away at that ship. Can't have these things continue attacking us. Fortunately, we do have our own ship supporting us. We have uh, three cannons on the underside as well. And it's going to try to get away. I wonder how much these things cost in terms of upkeep. And how they compare in terms of damage to artillery pieces or uh, sky junks or things like that. But anyway, by the looks of it, this ship will soon be going down 121 HP. Let's see it fall. And... Oh, wow, it actually looks like it has a sinking animation. That's pretty neat. And I like the uh, uh, corpse debris, whatever you want to call this, that it leaves behind. Damn, I love to see these uh, in the uh, uh, in the fight for what was it called? The Maelstrom, the Galleon's graveyard. As there are a bunch of like destroyed ships and uh, stuff all over that map and in the background as well. It would be great to see those. But anyway, with the destruction of the ship, with the fall of the enemy lord, it looks like the enemy army has finally been surrounded and destroyed. Huh? Is a broken texture somewhere out here? But anyway, the enemy army has finally been destroyed, though they did show us some really, really cool looking units. Hope to see at least some of them again. What is that? Wait. 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 It looks like something. It almost looks like writing on it. <laughs> oh, it's something here. Oh, uh, the broken texture appears to be on one of the war wagons. Hmm. At least it seems to be. Or maybe one of the heroes? I mean, it doesn't really matter, I was just curious. Anyway, anyway, great fight, great ships, great everything.
Damn, I was not expecting a lot of the stuff that we saw there. Certainly wasn't expecting the ship. Our ships, I should say. That was a big shock. Uh, even though uh, there was mention of something ship-y in the uh, comments, I didn't realize it was just big old ships. And then there was those rocket artillery. Dusk no, not the Dusk River Marine. Or was it the... I forget what the, which of the units was. I think it was the rocket artillery. Uh, Veteran Vanguard, Dusk Reaver Rocket Battery. Yeah, a single volley of those. A single volley. One. Uh, took half the HP of one of our infantry units. And then we had to book them into the trees or else they'd be destroyed. Similarly, the enemy lured with that Luminarch and or solar engine attack that they had, plus the uh, support fire from the ships, uh, nearly killed off one of our units of the Knights of the Path before they got anywhere near the battle which was very scary. Uh, very interesting to see our Hyper Elite units drop down to half HP in a single volley from the crazy range nonsense that the enemy has got going on. Uh, very nice indeed. Uh, I was pretty happy about that. Just in case we're going to enthrall the captives, I don't remember if we can still move, but I feel like we can't. But nonetheless, it's only a thousand gold, so yeah. Looks like our knights did a lot of work that time around. There we go, the Calling of Void. We got a free dragon scale, a little bit of that casualty or punishment tan money. And library quest completed. Uh, but I disciples think... Wait, let me just... Attraction. Not disciples, not this. Uh, this, yes, yeah, so we do have the empty dead now available. I think we won't be able to get them Absolute this turn, but we'll put them in next turn, and that will be good. Also, Dagon... Hello. Ooh, hey, you're like a little, uh, like a little ghost village sort of thing, but you've got a Morngul head. Oh, this is fantastic. I love everything about this. Uh, Dread Sea Horror. The Void of Depths Transform. Very nice. Oh, the Abyssal Remnant is going to have a lot of fun soon. Now, what do you do? What do you buff? Oh, you buff the Empty Dead. Well, that's perfect, because that's where we're going to put you. And you also buff the Pervaded Void and the Fourth Sister. Huh. Empty dead, pervaded void, fourth sister. Wait, 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 wait. What's a pervaded void? A moment. Shuckles. Damn. It's doing that thing again where you can't see all the, uh, can't see all the upgrades. What if I take a look at Aberash's guys? Uh, you. All right, what I wanted to see. Okay, so we have the fourth sister... Is that of the empty? Is that of the empty dead? What is the pervaded void? Huh? Is it perhaps fourth sister? I don't see no pervaded void here. Is it a regular ordo? No, it's not a regular ordo troops. Hmm. I don't know what that is. The pervaded void flying monster. It is an ordo profundum monster. Here, oh, oh, wait, is it yes, a, uh, wait, 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 is it one of these things? No. Oh, we can't see the regular, but the ones that upgrade into monsters, maybe it's one of those, but we, it, it's doing that bug. When we end the turn, it'll fix itself. All right, well, uh, we'll take a look at you next turn, I guess, but I'm excited to try you out. More new units. I don't know whether we'll actually keep them in that army, as in we might separate them afterwards, but it remains to be seen. Also, yes, we need to send them over there. You have already moved. And you, I take it, have gone far enough, because there's no more Astrogoth to be found here. Hmm. Well, that's a shame. All right, well, you are going to not be able to reach this, but Aberash is, so... You're just going to raise this, then. Like so, just to raise it, it'll be a little, basically no damage. That's fine. And, oh, of course, the one time we wanted you to move is the one time you don't. And you can't raid, but that's okay. Uh, this is mm, still attrition-y, though, so we're going to now move down here. And hit Jarna Grund and raise a blood keep there as soon as possible. We'll have to actually keep Rudiger near you for this turn, as if the... I guess raid. Uh, as if the... 
Which Hunter Threat spawns, they could certainly kill him because he doesn't have anything. Uh, Zacharias, we are keeping you where you are. Can't raid, but I had to double check. Gotta keep that metal flowing. Anarch, you are building your thing now, right? But we'll need to spend almost all our metal as soon as you can actually build it. Zacharias, Rotep, your temporary raider. Reinhardt, you're waiting to see if uh, armies appear here, which they very well might. And I believe we're good ones some more. So, Diplo. Always checking that Diplo, and none of that I care about. Certainly don't care about Clan Spittle's non-aggression offers. Alright, skip, skip, skip. So I forgot to... No, I didn't. We're fine. Skip, skip, and then turn. Trade gained Ambuscator for Anarch von Karstein. Swill for him. Not that the ambush really matters all that much. At least it's certainly not something that we really need to rely on. And Hellkeek, you randomly declared war on us, dude. Why do you now want all those non-aggression peak? No, non-aggression packs. Non -aggression and all right, I see Carl. Nothing spawned at Nol, but it looks like somebody spawned right beside Edmund. Well, I guess he does want more of those Fleshwalker mongrels. And there's another one here. Oh, that's not great. It could potentially attack Middenheim by itself. Obliterate the threat we're working on a game, working on it. There's that attrition reduction. And I guess we'll pick a new tech, Clawing Shadows. And an into unfathomable growth. Clawing Shadows will certainly help if we send an army out to sea. It is an if, though. And... I really don't like how Reinhardt is stuck. I think maybe we'll have to build a basic army here. And aha, there is somebody beside Anarch. I think this one we can auto-resolve, though. Or actually, the game might not let us. I guess we're about to find out. Well, what do we... Be ah, we do have one here. All right, we know that Aberesh's army is strong. Or is it? Hmm, that's another question. You go to the challenge stone. I'm just very curious to see if Kolek is there. I would like him... I, I would like Aberash to slay Kolek. I wonder if he'd get any buffs for drinking uh, Kolek's blood. Hmm. Alright, fine. Uh, if anybody knows how to use this, please let me know. Kolek. Unit mass? Oh, right, the mass. The extra mass is great. I don't really care about the bonus versus large. But is it so great? Is it worth it to go all the way out there? That's the for it alone. That's the question. Anyway, you're gonna still leech XP, and I'm assuming that we cannot resolve this little army. Besides the victory, no one will die. Good. Probably take a little bit of damage, but whatever. It's fine. And we will take the probably healing. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, there we go. We're at four Disciples of Aberash, so we really need to uh, summon them. Uh, you're going to go into... You know what? Don't go into raiding. I want you to go towards Jarnagrun. I'd like to reach it sooner. Redigar. I'm assuming that there is no army here. We're just going to march Stancy over here and then hopefully reach it. Ah, you know what? You can probably raid. Nope, not anymore. Ah, <laughs> uh, I keep screwing you over, sir. But that's the nature of the game. Alex uh, Stone, and frankly, that's the nature of the vampire. As I've said before, the main thing that keeps the vampires from just wrecking the entire world is that they keep themselves in check and, uh, and not from overpopulating, because they're all constantly backstabbing and killing each other off, just constantly. Uh, it's it's, it's kind of hilarious. Uh, let's see. We do need to deal with you, we do need to deal with you. I just want to see if somebody had two spawn near them. Because that would be worth a fight. It would damn well be worth a fight. Hmm, what about the Abyssal Revenant? Ah, he did have one here. Hmm. I wonder, would you be able to go here? Then, summon your first empty dead. Ah, but then you won't be able to reach this guy. Okay, I guess we'll have to wait until next turn to fight him. Ah, that's fine, that's fine. It's somewhat fine. And destroy the zombie or delete the zombie. Pop that new hero in there. No, 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 wait, wait, what did I... What did I do? Increase mobility versus replenish troops. Ooh. Oh, well, that's... Damn. <laughs> that's a hard choice. I'm gonna have to say increase mobility first. I actually think it does both, but, you know, just in case there's a bug, I'd rather do that. 
I will cast <laughs> it says increase mobility, but it doesn't do the replenish troops, or maybe it will once we start leveling it, but it's certainly not doing it right now. So we'll have to keep an eye on it. Uh, you... I mean, yeah, you guys aren't that leveled, but you also haven't been fighting that much. I'm just now kind of wondering, do we still go for Warriors of the Wandering Path like we've been doing, or do we start getting everybody for Honor and Glory instead? Nah, but the new armies are still going to need levels, so the unit XP cap per turn for all armies faction-wide is still going to be very, very useful to us. So I think we'll do that, right? We'll do one point in Kraken's Pool because it's a really useful spell, and then we'll do Warriors of the Wandering Path. They're good. All right, I'm excited to try these guys out. Also, are you able to upgrade to Profundum Knights yet? No. Tier 7. All right, this is going to be a tough fight for you, sir. Uh, we should probably use you to reinforce as well. Oh, these guys might attack the little guy instead of the big guy. Eh, on the other hand, they might not. I can't quite tell where the edge of the uh, circle is, but try staying there. Yeah, that looks like that'll be fine. Assuming they will attack the Abyssal Revenant and we'll see him in action. Man, if we can auto-resolve the rest of them, we can see him and his new unit fight right now. Which I would like to do. I think we should prioritize. Alright. Assuming that we can kill Luther Huss with an auto-resolve. Although... Oh, right. This arm. Oh, you're actually going to struggle against this. Hmm. We do have the Fleshwalker Mongrels. Now we do have Tiberius Kale, who is still level 1, though. Gotta give him items as well, but I'll do it later. Uh, in the meantime, let's level you up before we head into battle. I fear that we have to fight this one manually, as in I fear that we have no choice but to do so. As the auto result most likely screw us, but just in case, level everybody up, and that includes you, Eddie. You've buffed up your Black Knights as well as you can, and does any of this actually buff them? No. So we are free to ignore this entire tree if we want to. I mean, we could not ignore it and get Undeath Resurgent. I suppose we are using the Exotic Dead, though, so and there's still value to it. All right, fine. Uh, let's buff up Invocation of the Eternal Wanderer, though you're not actually the one casting it typically, but, you know, there are emergencies. Oh, you know what? I lied. We should get Immortal Horror first. Pretty important to have, after all. Now go for Luther. Let's see if this is out of resolvable. It is. I think I prefer watching the Abyssal Revenant fight since we've seen this guy's army. Ah, but then we won't be able to see the Fleshwalkers and stuff the first time. Nah, we're gonna fight it. We're gonna fight it. Screw it. I want it. We gotta see everything. Try it all out and have some fun. Uh, Razor Standard for you. We also need to get you one more Grave Guard. Actually, no, we don't because we can raise another Fleshwalker. So we're good. Go. All right, for the Ordo Templarum indeed. Here we go, Edmund on the field again, and he's gotten so much stronger with his army. I'm excited to see it in action. We also have Vanguard deployment on the Black Knights now and can put them all behind the enemy army. And we have the Fleshwalker Mongrels to lead them as well. These guys, as we saw, were very, very strong as they could face off against the... Uh, uh, face off against the Disciples of the Path Knights, or at least to some degree. They ain't Doom Wolf Knights yet, but they will be eventually, once we level them up. And certainly they'll be strong enough to take on Questing Knights, or whatever it is we encounter here. Anyway, we're gonna start the battle up by moving in with our, uh, Bloodkin Thrall, or Bloodkin... Adept? Caster? Bloodkin Aspirant, there we are. That's the word. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, he's going to summon a unit of zombies on top of the Inquisition kill squad such that it cannot fire, and then get a pretty darn decent hit of a, a 20,000 damage dealing wind of death through the enemy lines. It didn't kill a single one of the enemy units, but it certainly did damage. And that's all right because we've got other units to do the killing. Here come the big old super bar guys. Oh, I like that glide down the hill that they're doing 
right now. And they're going to land right in the middle of the biggest enemy blob. We have a, a storm of the night coming down on the enemy lord while Edmund hunts him. And while the enemy is distracted by our units of uh, Sky Reavers. In the background, the enemy are getting hit by our Black Knights. Though, by the looks of it, we've gotten the Black Knights engaged in a little bit of a dangerous situation here. And are going to have to keep them healed up. We're going to get some zombies to make sure that not too many enemies are hitting them. And make sure that the uh, Fleshwalker Mongrels are there as well to dish out the damage and help them out. Obviously, the Black Knights are fragile, but it does look like the enemy Questing Knights will move away, at least for a little while, which is going to be helpful to us as they won't be bringing as many of the Black Knights down, especially now that the latter are more or less stuck. Keep buffing them up with those invocations of Nahek, but the melee troops are nearly here and will hopefully provide a nice distraction. By the looks of it, this is going to be a very quick battle as the biggest of the enemy blobs after getting hit with that Wind of Death and also getting hit with the figurative Wind of Death, which is our uh, Sky Reavers, are pretty much all done for. Now it's just a matter of mobbing and surrounding the big old blob here that has in turn surrounded our Black Knights and our Flesh Walkers. But we do have plenty more infantry than the enemy does at this point as we've reduced their numbers pretty heavily. Run down those Questing Knights, they're shaking their wavering army. Losses by the looks of it are just about to cause the rest of the army to rout. Alrighty. Excited to get uh, more of these uh, Fleshwalker Mongrels on the field and then level them up and then upgrade them to those lovely Doom Knights. Doom Wolf Knights, I should say. Anyway. Oh, also our, our hero Tiberius uh, was in here somewhere. Should have been able to spot him considering those Chaos Steroids by the looks of it. Before he turned vampiric certainly made him a very, very big and healthy boy. Well, healthy... Maybe not, but... <laughs> uh, depends how you look at it. Anyway, chase them down best you can, but off screen. Alright, very nice once again, Edmund. I think with that we've uh, pretty firmly established that this army is damn well strong enough now to auto-resolve uh, these uh, little... Uh which hunter army fights. Uh, it was certainly the weakest army before, but that is no longer the case, especially with the addition of the Super Vargeists, aka Sky Reavers, and the Fleshwalker Mongrels. Very nice indeed. We do have to start leveling up Tiberius Kale, though, since he did start at level 1, unlike our newly recruited heroes, so uh, it is a decent idea to get him into more fights, though. That can always be via the uh, auto resolve, especially against uh, future armies of the same caliber, let's say. Now, we do want to proceed to Middenheim, but I'm a little bit wary of March stancing, since yeah, the army may be stronger, but not to the point that we should risk getting uh, obliterated while in march stance. And we certainly got heavily damaged like that before. So we'll march up and ooh, we gain three levels out of that one. Very nice. And oh, you have increased mobility as well. I'm tempted to say we should focus that before anything else. Ooh, when do we get the Doomwolf Alpha 16? Level 16. We'll work on it. Uh, let's do Invocation of the Eternal Wanderer and Curse of Undeath and... Fine, fine. The hunger first, and then we should really try to get honor or death, but also increase mobility. There's a lot of good stuff there, uh, everywhere, I guess. Anyway, you can, you probably don't need to level against a single enemy army, so we'll leave that as it currently is. Zach, I was going to send you after Curl, or possibly. In oh, disciple. This army survived. Oh no, that's not great. Uh, that's definitely my bad. I didn't realize it had survived. That's not... Ugh, damn. <laughs> I screwed that up. Uh, I should have destroyed that army. I really, really should have. Alright, well, I guess you're going after it. No choice in the matter. Because now we didn't get the uh, replenishment of the uh, special troop for this army because this army wasn't destroyed. 
Oh well, I guess hopefully this army will besiege and stay there for a little while and then Zack can get this one and Edmund can get that one. Since I wasn't paying attention, I, I, I had I had it in my head that that army would get destroyed, but it didn't get destroyed, so... Uh, yes. It is my fault entirely. Anyway, uh, can we auto-resolve you? Yeah. And you have only the single Inquisition kill team? Yeah, I think we're fine. Uh, these armies have become relatively weak, and I'd really rather see the Abyssal Revenants now. Uh, at least against one of these. It's a lot more fragile and newer than this army, after all. Let's replenish just in case. I think we're going to head into Mount Gunbad for the turn. Although, what's the likelihood this guy can reach us there? I don't know, but let's let's go to Mount Gunbad. Heal up to the maximum degree, and anyway, we wanted to build that empowered reliquary of the seal to get an additional blood kiss, so... And that's what we'll do. Uh, we don't need to upgrade you. I am... Sorely tempted to upgrade at least one point in the training grounds just for the additional XP, and it's not like... This only costs us money, so it doesn't really matter. In fact, we should take a look at similar structures in other... Uh, in other armies. And also the structures that increase our hero recruit capacity. Oh. This one actually increased cap, it just says Drakenhof Templar cap increase. But it doesn't say plus one or plus two. I know that Aberash's buildings say plus two, this just doesn't, doesn't say anything. Maybe that means plus one, the fact that it doesn't specify? Or maybe it means nothing at all. Who knows? Anyway, from him, you are headed down to the Abyssal Riptide. I wonder if you... wait, go here. Maybe you can head directly into it? Ah, yes you can, fantastic. Reverse the Riptide. And you're gonna join the Revenant. Right here. Honestly, now I'm no longer 100% sure that the Revenant needs two heroes, but, well, and that's what he's gonna get. Anyway, the rest of this looks good. We could probably upgrade a few units with the Martial Valor, but maybe I'll do that between the episodes Warrior instead. I really want to see this guy do some fighting. Uh, we are not going to put you in camp? Or are we? If we do, you might get an ambush going and hit... Eh, you know what? That's not the worst idea. Oh, wait, but if you fail... No, no! He might be able to go around and hit Zack anyway. I'm not entirely sure. I feel like he's going to attack, so it's fine. It's fine as it is. Building upgrade, skip on a sign, blah, 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 skip. I'll let us just double check that none of these can upgrade to tier 4 yet. No. It's going to be a little bit of a while. Ooh, but Mount Gunbat is about to unlock another one of these quests, which is great, which means more of these units. And... Yeah, currently, wait. Trident of Mathani. I still need to do your quest battle for your trident, but right now we only have a worthy foe type things, which I would like to get into, but only after Aberash has his uh, uh, has his new disciples on the field, which should be next episode after he hits Jarna Grund and the presumably tons of enemies there. Should be a worthy fight. Anyway, let's end the turn. And oh wow, we are very much out of time. Well, too late now. I'm ending the turn. Skaldorish the. Unbearable or unbreakable? I couldn't say. Unbearable would be funnier. Uh, peace treaty with Itza, no. Abyssal Revenant still needs to hang around here, and he's going to hang around there and raise your stuff for the free XP and money and whatnot. And we still can't spot Astrogoth. Maybe I should have left him one of the territories here just in case it causes him to respawn. Migration gives us control. No, uh, growth, I mean, and that's definitely what we're going to do. Welcome, feel free. And a noble's enthralled stain. Spawn legendary hero, Rabbi von Stahl. Another legendary hero. Well, that's just lovely. And warrior ascendant gear, the dragon crest reforged. Okay, well, that seems like something we'll want to be focusing on. Uh... You didn't move. Is what is wrong with you? Why didn't you move? Okay, well. We're kind of out of time, but at the same time, I promised to check out the Abyssal Revenant in a fight and some of his units, so that's damn well what we're gonna do. And would you please just move in as a reinforcement? Okay, okay, okay. I, thank you. <laughs> and Gorok is there too, which we might as well get the defeat trade on. Abyssal Revenant, we gave you all the good items. Potion of Healing, Ward Save, uh, that, uh, uh, that Talisman of Protection. While you don't have the Trident of Mathline, you have the Dark Tormentor Blade, so Tormentor Sword Plus. A rubric of Dark Dimensions, which is all uh, pretty darn decent. Go. And yeah, I'm excited to see Dagon. I'm excited to see the Empty Dead. I'm excited to see the Abyssal Revenant. Lots of excitement. Uh, let's pop the... Razor standard on one of you guys, and the ranger standard on... Who's slow? 37, you're on foot. 
Yeah, I'm gonna give this to you. Strider should help you move a little bit faster. What do you have? Eldritch Wounds, base weapon and armor piercing weapon damage. I think all Lord of Profundum units can get that contact effect. Anyway, let's fight this real quick. Go. All righty, let's take a look. And I know that we've seen the Abyssal Revenant at least once already, but doesn't he look fantastic with that skeletal coaddle mount? Uh, or, I guess, skeletal model of a uh, coaddle mount a looking just just great and i can't wait to see it in action a little bit more though by the looks of it it'll be taking a few hits from the huh, almost look like its eye popped out there for a second uh taking a few hits from the enemy hand gunners as it moves in but we've got a pretty decent hp pool and by the looks of it the hand gunners ain't hitting too hard at the current time uh just had a gear 31 ward safe 20 physical and 45 missile yeah so that's not going to be easy then we have dagon ithaca and the empty dead here all of which have those uh, fancy uh, dual-sided weapons and ooh, look at all the stuff going on with their helmets these guys are looking pretty damn great all right, can't wait to see them in combat. I love the variation in their uh, in their helmets as well, and in their weaponry. All right, well, all of you are Vanguard deployed far away from the rest of the army, which is going to take their sweet time in getting here. But uh, well, these are our toughest units anyway, so damn well they should have been in one ten to the fray. Green lightning comes down as the well, I guess it gets brought down by the empty dead, probably one of their effects, and then they head on into the fight. And that looks pretty painful. Looks like they cast a sort of I don't know tide call looking thing upon the enemy as they fight, or at least periodically do. And that's not all, folks. We've got a dragon transformation, the skeletal revenant. Uh, dreaded horror, that's what it's called. Alrighty. Dreaded horror indeed. Looking pretty darn skeletal. You've shed all your flesh when you've uh, transformed, but I'm excited to see how effective you are at killing things. I look pretty darn great as you do. I also love in this uh, green theme working for me. All right, very nice. And our elites are still working away, though it looks like our uh, basic units are finally moving into the field. Uh, the Bloodkin Thrall Adept Knights have hit around the enemy, and it looks like our Bloodkin Thrall Warriors are in as well. Now that they've engaged the enemy army, our Bloodkin Thrall Adept Knights are free to charge into the enemy back lines without being worried about getting ripped apart by enemy halberdiers. There we go. Once again, I'd like to make an army with uh, lots of add So I guess we are sort of doing that with our uh, monster army currently being recruited in Castle Drakenhof. Anyway, looks like the Abyssal Revenant is seeing plenty of units run before him. How's that damage looking? He hasn't cast any damaging spells at the current time. 13k, not too bad. As I understand it, we have a decent amount of Mortis Engine effects and such on our, uh, on our units. Of the Ordo Profundum specifically. <laughs> I like how the dragon... Dagon Dragon. Let's go with Dagon Dragon. Uh, has completely ignored those... Uh, uh, those Pegasus Knights. Just kind of going through them as if they don't matter. And it looks like in this particular battle, they very much don't. Tons of lightning effects continue around, but it looks like the enemy's having a pretty bad day. There's that coaddle attack with that lightning breath. And the enemy lord is about to fall, or at the very least run away. Yeah, probably run away as he is very low HP, while the rest of his army will follow the Witch Hunter General. And just like that, the battle will be ours. Lovely, damn. Seeing lots of cool uh, units today here, and I like to see these uh, Ordo Profundum units. Ooh. In the dark like this, hunting units down. Pretty neat. All right, 
I just wanted a couple of extra shots of the Dagon Dragon uh, doing things. Anyway, we got a lot of chasing to do as we do every time, it seems, but we can do it off screen. Alright, that was pretty great. Love seeing those empty dead in action and the Dagon and the Abyssal Revenant. Everybody had a lot of fun. I've been far, far too long not uh, seeing lots of stuff from uh, the uh, uh, from the Ordo Profundum guys. Very much enjoyed that and I'm expecting great things as we send them into uh, more difficult battles to come. I guess we will hear heal up it's once again not a lot of money and on top of that these guys don't really have uh, too much in the way of invocation of Nehek on them Zacharias you do not need any items because you're just a temp lord here to raid and nothing else and a great and worthy act oh I should pay attention to what your worthy oh, acts are because you're new and you're uh, legends there here you have Eldritch Aura and Blight Swarm and Regeneration win a battle with 2,000 kills well I know where we're gonna get that That'll have to be the, uh, the Skaven. We probably won't get it out of Itza. I mean, I suppose they could build a ton of skinks and then have them defend a, a territory like this. Maybe it's possible. But anyway. Anyway, with that, we're very, very much out of time, obviously. So I am calling the episode here next time. Hopefully the Abyssal Remnant gets more fights. We have to complete the destruction of these little, uh... uh oh, we can destroy you right now. And you're besieging, yes? Let me reach you. Oh, just out of range. That's a sham. I was hoping that we could destroy them right now, but all right, fine, fine, fine. We'll uh, we'll destroy them next time. And all right, the free empty dead. I gotta remember. You know what? I gotta do that right now, or else I will forget to do that as well. Uh, you're gonna go away. And we're going to get it. Okay, fine. We're going to move you into here. And we're getting another one of these. Beautiful. And then the last zombie can be deleted immediately, actually, as we will be putting the new Ordo Profundum hero in here as well. Maybe we'll replace some of these guys for more empty dead, depending depending on how many more of these witch hunter threats this army will face off against. Anyway, as I said, calling it here next time. More battles, more tryouts, more stuff to do. Hopefully a couple more worthy foes, but most definitely Jarna Grund and probably the biggest concentration of uh, Chaos Dwarfs. Or really any vanilla factions we're likely to find in a single place so that'll be a fun time stay tuned for it don't forget to leave those likes and comments below especially to threshold al glory to the algorithm and thanks for watching